Hey everybody, welcome to another perfect concert playlist. This episode, we're discussing the kinks, the zombies, and the monkeys. Hey, did we go back a little bit? Yep. I know we were headed towards the late 70s. Guess what? We have to rewind a bit because this is the one episode I kept forgetting to put together. Ron's on the other side, so thank you for going back in time again further. How's it going? All right. I'm okay going back. I love going back. <laughs> um, now, uh, this list was a little torturous because we're trying to find two bands that go with the Monkees, and I really hemmed and hawed over one that my mother suggested because the Monkees, I think, is her favorite band. Uh, she said the Herman's Hermits, and I, boy, I was torn between uh, uh, zombie or yeah, the zombies and Herman's Hermits. But um, hopefully, we made the right choice. <laughs> Don't be upset with us. Um, so I believe you went first last time, right? Go for it. Okay. Take the wheel, my boy. All right. So, um, opening up for this mass. If you haven't listened to the show before, it's basically we, we we pick three bands unless they're really popular. You know, we do two, and if it's the Beatles, we did one. Um, basically, we put together. Hey, if we had unlimited time and money or whatever, you know, we could bring people, you know, back from the dead, back, you know, bands back together, whatever, and had them play. Whatever songs we wanted for our perfect concert playlist, who would they be and what would they play? Um, so that's the concept. So uh, the zombies are going to open, and um, there's a couple obvious ones in here, of course, but I went a little bit deeper into their catalog. Uh, time of the season. I know that's not exactly how you kick off a concert. <laughs> Look, it, but it's, it's a mood setter, I guess. Just uh, You know, and it was one of their biggest hits, so why not? Um, then following up with It's Alright With Me, This Will Be Our Year, Smoky Day, and She's Not There. Now, two minutes ago, I looked at my list, and for some reason I wrote This Will Be Our Year twice. <laughs> and as he's calling me, I'm like, wait, 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 I gotta get this. <laughs> Alright, so that's my zombies. Did you find another one? Or? Yeah, yeah, She's Not There. For some reason, instead of writing okay. that, I wrote This Will Be Our Year twice. Oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha. I don't know why. <laughs> this will be your year. Somehow I missed that. You know, that was on my list at one point, and I got bumped off. Okay. Okay. So, hey, I'm okay with time of the season. I, I, I too, have that on my list. Okay. Uh, honestly, when you when you listen to a lot of these songs, I'm, well, I'm taken back to what I listened to growing up, so it brings back a lot of nostalgia. Whether it was something I would have picked on my own or not, that remains to be seen, but... A lot of these do stand on their own. Um, but time of the season was one you always end up singing, whether you sing it well or not. <laughs> uh, she's not there. They did a cover of Gershwin's Summertime that I really like. It's a little more upbeat than what you norm normally hear it. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I wouldn't mind hearing that. Uh, going out of my head. Can't nobody love you. Got to move on. And I think the what was the song we just said? That one got kicked off by this one. Drops reeling and stupid. Because as I got further into it, I forgot they did this song, and I love it. Okay. Um, um, I thought, ahead. I was thoroughly convinced until I went through this list. Do you remember that song? Um, uh, because she's Wendy. I thought that was there. So I, I, don't know, I don't know why I thought that. No. Uh, who is that? I don't know, but they're they're a lot moodier than I remember them being. Uh, my sister yeah. got me into them because we watched a movie. I want to say it was called Dear Wendy, where it was a, a Lars von Trier film about these teenagers that find a gun in the chaos that follows afterwards, and they use a lot of zombies music in it. Gotcha. Yeah. All the right. Zombie, Go ahead. There was, um, I think, the bass player, or at least at the very beginning... It's one of those names from the 60s that you would have never thought of. Because if I, I was reading up on this the other day, and I, like, like the Romero's uh, Night of the Living Dead. Uh-huh. What do you mean now yet? That's like, what, 68? 68. Yeah. Something like that. So, zombies weren't really a big thing except in literature. Maybe in some movies, but, um, like, uh, I think the bass player at the very beginning, before he left, he came up with this name, and his idea, it was like from the... Ah, uh, what's the culture? Darn it! <laughs> oh my Are gosh, you talking like Louisiana, Haitian, like the voodoo culture? Oh, like it's like a voodoo type thing. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, they, it's from that culture, but 
uh, I don't know if voodoo was used, but before he left, they said they left him a gift, and it was the name of the band. And one guy kind of liked it, went along, went away with it anyway. The other guy loved it. And to me, it was one of those names where, like, the kind of music they sang makes you wonder, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I... the zombies to me sounds like something, a, a title for somebody's band, or excuse me, the name of a band from our, our era. Well... Know? I also thought, like, the zombies seem like the animals. You know, something that would be more like party rock is what I yeah. would associate with, yeah. I looked it up, by the way. Right. Wendy was sung by The Association. Gotcha. Okay. All right, so uh, next I have right. The Kinks. What? What? I have three more on there. I, I, I oh, got, I'm sorry. I went off on a tangent. Imagine that. I went on a tangent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, moving on, you really got to hold on me and different games. Okay. For my top ten. You know what's funny is this is the first time I think that we've ever done our list where I filled out every all 30 spots, and it's mostly monkeys. <laughs> I love the monkeys so much, but I do have much respect for the kinks, so I do have more than five songs with them. Um, you got to start off with the big fan favorite, the one that has a, just a great riff, and that's uh, You Really Got Me. Yep. Uh, all the day and all of the night. And then we're going to bring it down a little bit. There, there's stuff that, like, the mid-70s was more melancholy. I skipped the big one, Lola. I, I, I don't know why. I just I didn't want to do that. Was, I felt like it was tired and played out. Um, so I went with A Well-Respected Man, Waterloo Sunset, which is one of my favorites. It's just a nice little, like, plucky, uh, just sitting in the yard or whatever, just kind of on a ukulele kind of song. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Strangers, Living on a Thin Line, and... I know it's a weird one to finish it off with, but I love Ape Man. What? Ape Man. How do I not know that one? Uh, it's fun. Go listen to it. It's a it's a goofy little song that they did like in the early uh, the early run of their career. So Ape Man, like I am okay. Never mind. Well, I am an Ape Man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm your turn. Okay, so my group. Sorry, I went with Yo 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 to. <laughs> Sorry, every time I hear that song, though, I weird yeah, takes over. Say, well, there's so many Weird Al songs that we know that version yep. more than we do the original. Yeah, that's sad, isn't it? No. <laughs> that tells you <laughs> so the power of, of like, Weird Al. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of people, I mean, they say that if Weird Al's covered you, you've made it, right? Yep, basically. Unless you print, and he's like, no way. But anyway. Uh, let's see, you really got me. Sunny afternoon, all day and all the night, living on a thin line. Love them. Do it again. Celluloid. Cell. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> Celluloid Heroes was a fun one. Okay. Um, don't forget to dance. I'm not like everybody else. Where have all the good times gone? I absolutely love this. Whenever I hear the Kinks, this is the song. Yeah, right that one almost made my list. <laughs> I had no idea they sung Lola. <laughs> when I think of the Kinks, I think of where have all the good times go, and that's that's the song. Yeah, it's um, so funny. Their career is a lot longer than a lot of these guys. They went decades. I mean, they started in the mid '60s and went to the early '80s with like you know top forty hits. Yeah. So I did have a bonus. Last of the steam powered trains. It's just it's just a fun one, and that's that's my list. Yeah. All right, so The Monkees, mine is expansive. I don't know how far in you went. I was going to tell you to listen to their last album, um, but I forgot. Uh, so The Monkees are weird because they're one of the only bands that I know of that was put together for a TV show. They didn't pre-exist and then get a TV show. And, and they didn't get a lot of respect because I think people forget that they were doing the show, doing the concerts, and also recording the albums constantly for like... Three or four years, there was no breaks whatsoever, and they didn't really have time. So they're on tour, so they can't record the album. So they have session players in there. They have other people writing their songs. You know, we had uh, Neil Diamond writing a couple of their great ones. Um, Carol King, a uh, Carol King or whatever. You know, they're, they're, it's just the way it was. It was just a thousand miles per hour. I don't know how the Beatles did it. How they shot movies how they were on tour constantly recording like three albums a year. I don't know how they did it. It's amazing, but it's also not a shock that they burn out after five years or six, yeah, five no. or six years. And then the same thing with the monkeys, the, uh, 
So like halfway through, they decided to take more control of their music. And this is something that Mike Nesmith was trying to push from day one. But he wasn't exactly pop friendly. He, he mo- wrote more like folksy, country, more pensive <laughs> kind of stuff. And Peter was more of a blues guy. And it was kind of just like breaking, not only like with the, the label, but also like the band apart themselves because they had their own ideas of what they wanted to do. So yeah, the show only lasted, I think, two and a half years, maybe only two. And then by 68, and they did that movie Head. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Have you? I have not seen it, no. It's it's very strange because it's almost like an anti-movie. It's more of the beginnings of MTV. And there is a story that goes through it, but it's so threadbare and... Basically, they could just have a music video to music video to music video. That's the whole movie. There's really no... It's not a, a plot-oriented thing. And this would well, be like... a Beatles thing, too, wasn't it? Well, I think... Be- i never seen a Beatles movie, but I thought that they were more plot-oriented. But I, I don't know. No, that's what I'm saying, where it's really... It seemed really thin, the plot. Oh, okay. Um, was one. <laughs> and a lot of it was about them dealing with the, the gain and loss of fame. And then by 69, the band was just completely falling apart. Everybody was gone except for P, uh, for um, Mike and Mickey. And, you know, they had their... Remember they had the 80s revival when uh, Nick at Night debuted and all of a sudden the monkeys exploded and they were shown on MTV and they came back and... I don't know. They're one of these guys that, like, every 10 years they'll have a comeback. But now we only have one left and he... Uh, I'm a little worried. Because he canceled all his upcoming dates um, because he wasn't feeling very good, and that worries me to no end. I saw them 10 years ago or so, and it was a phenomenal concert, but I still regret not being able to see um, when Davey was part of it. Um, But I I took my mom for her birthday to see them, and, and it was just an absolutely wonderful event. Um, so, and the monkeys mean so much to me because it meant so much to my mother, and she passed that along to us. Yes. So this list is long. Sorry for that big, big lead up, but I want to talk about them because they're very important to me. Um, and you have that too. You have you know bands that were passed down to you that are, are weren't yeah. of your generation, but they're very important to you. That's this list right here. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna start off with a couple obvious ones, but then I get like deep into the <laughs> the weeds here. <laughs> um. I'm a believer in Last Train to Clarksville. Just full on rocking. Yeah. Mickey is the rock and roll guy. You know, Davey was the ballad guy, and then I said what the other two were. Um, and there's a lot of you're not going to know just by name, but a lot of these are Mike's Mike Nesmith stuff because his is more uh, thoughtful, I think. Um, yeah. But uh, Tapioca Tundra, a song my mother doesn't even know, <laughs> is number three. <laughs> or no, 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 number three is. <laughs> As a door into summer, and then tapioca tundra, um, uh, Valerie, which is a big rockin' epic song. Uh, uh-huh. You you just may be the one. Um, here's one, Mary Mary, which we know our generation knows because it was covered by Run DMC. <laughs> Do you remember that one, oh, Mary wow. Mary? Why you bugging? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, um, Look Out, She, and I think their last single, which was off like the 2015-2016 uh, album, was called You Bring the Summer, which I think is a, a fantastic song. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, the guys from uh, Fountains of Wayne, they wrote a bunch of songs for that final album. So that's it has a more, like, current poppy feel, if you know Fountains of Wayne. Um, okay. And there's another one that threw my mother off because she doesn't know it by the name, but Randy Scoose Git. <laughs> yes. Uh, she Makes Me Laugh, which is also off the last album. Uh, okay, now this is the first time I've ever done this. I'm flipping the page, guys. Flipping the page. <laughs> uh, a, a, a bluesy, kind of like a grungy song for them back in the 60s was Going Down. Uh-huh. Um, your Auntie Griselda, which is so much fun. It's so weird. <laughs> I don't know that one. Uh, that one was played on the show a bunch. Now, everybody knows the opening song, which I skipped on this because I think it's too obvious. I think that's the kind of thing they would play like in some montage video before the concert even starts, you know, just to warm you up. Um, but for Pete's sake is the song that plays at the end of the show. This generation, you know, that's the one that they always played. Um, 
Pleasant Valley Sunday. Uh, tomorrow is going to be another day, which is one of their final as a band, I think. And you know, we you know before they broke up in the the seventies. And yeah. I want I just another kick ass rock and roll Mickey Dolan's lead song. I'm not your stepping stone. That's how I'm ending it. I'm not your stepping stone. Yep. All right, now okay, taking a well, breath. Now letting you talk. <laughs> I. <clears throat> I probably could have dug into the weeds too, but I didn't on this one. <laughs> so uh, I kind of kept it down. I, I was with you with the theme. I kind of wanted that to be like, that's exactly what I wanted. They, they would walk out on stage or something along those lines with that music playing or um, whether they did the whole song or not. I don't know, but uh, I'm a believer. And Last Train to Clarksville, of course, have to be on that list. Valerie, I think we got a lot of this, the big ones here. Yeah, I yeah. Think, but, uh, you bring the summer was a good one. Words. This one, this one sounds like something you and I and a couple of other guys in college would have done around two a.m. when I had the guitar out and we're just screwing around with lyrics, right? Yeah. Gonna buy me a dog. I know. I was so I almost, I almost <laughs> made that one. I even, I even wrote it down, and I was like, man, it's between that and going down. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you were so good at just coming up with lyrics on the fly. I can just I could lay down the chords. We'd have we'd have a hit. I but. miss. I really wish we had accidentally re- erased all that silliness that we did. No kidding. All right. Uh, listen to the band. That's one of their. Yeah, that was that was another one where I really wanted to add. Take a giant step. Tomorrow's going to be another day. Is a really good, sweet song. Um, yeah, take another step is a good one. That one's almost trippy. Like it almost feels like it belongs on like um, Sergeant Pepper kind of thing. I will say that the monkey. Of course, a lot of these groups evolved over the years, but um, the monkeys weren't around that long. So, well, I, well okay, they're around for a while. I well, sixty six. Scheme of things, they were. But as as the four of them, it was sixty six to early sixty nine, I believe. I'm ninety one percent sure of that. I think Peter left about a year after the the show ended. So there really is only a few years where it's all four of them. Right. What is the thing? Uh, there. It seems like they're musical. You were talking about they all had various different styles, and I thought that was really cool. That's one unique thing about the monkeys that I always thought was cool. Like when a person, different person stepped up to the mic, he had a different style song. Right. And it worked for him. And I was more of the uh, the more rocking, uh, folksy kind of. I liked that part of it, the, the more soft rock stuff. Some of them I liked, mostly probably, again, like, nostalgia my mom loved it so I, I remember it and i sing it to this day you know um oh also have daydream believer on there obviously. yeah did i even I, I didn't even put daydream believer you know um in concert uh they don't sing daydream believer they play the video of uh um davy singing it and then you the whole audience sings with them and it was such a beautiful moment yeah i was like you get you can't have that song without having Davy with the tambourine. Right. And, and, and they were smart <laughs> enough to know that, so they just stepped back yeah. and honored him with that video. Yeah. That's awesome. And that is my list. And it's a shorter one, but... Yeah. I'm well, mine was pretty movie. epic, honestly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, so that is the end of that. So we're going to go back to the 70s, and I got a doozy. It's going to be Ario Speedwagon, Chicago, and the Doobie Brothers. Oreo, Oreo. Sorry. Taking it to the streets. When I was a kid, I thought it was Oreo Speedwagon for years until my mom says, why do you keep saying Oreo? And then showed me the cover. I was like, oh. <laughs> now, this is one where I had, you, you got to see the monkeys live. I got to see Oreo as they are like five years ago. So yeah. this will be a fun one. Well, they were here in town apparently right before we moved here. So that's kind of a bummer. And the Doobie Brothers are playing, I believe, at the embassy in Fort Wayne real soon. But, you know, I, and Michael McDonald's back with them. So, and that's the loophole is um, sometimes you get to pick, you know, with, with these bands, if you don't, you know, have enough whatever of their original songs, you can always go to their solo stuff. So, like, with Chicago, you can do Peter Cetera. And with uh, yep. with um, Doobie Brothers, you can choose Michael McDonald songs as well. I remember going to the damn Yankees concert and hearing some Ted Nugent stuff. 
<laughs> yeah, well, that's that's like an extra bonus, especially when they only have like one or two albums. It, it helps fill it out. Like, I wonder, yeah. when Sammy Hagar joined Van Halen, did he bring his songs with him? Robert would be the one to ask about that. I've got okay. dogs going on. All righty. Well, I guess that's a good sign to stop recording. Bye, everybody. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay, we're out. It's okay, I got a dog too that barks like crazy.